Hey everybody, I'm Ben from the Bonehead Podcast and today I'm joined by Milton. Hi. How are you doing today, Milton? I'm good, thank you. Wonderful. So we are at Entoyment in Poole, a fantastic war game shop full of an indecent amount of gamer loot. Um, brilliant venue, we use it for our tournaments. And the reason we're here today is because this coming Saturday all the Wood Elf loot is coming out for Blood Bowl and Entoyment have kindly allowed us to come and have a look early, open them, um, and see what it's all about. We do have some other Blood Bowl products to compare, so by the end of this video you should have a good idea of how they stack up compared to their previous Blood Bowl releases. Let's have a look. So the first thing we're going to look at today is the Wood Elf Pitch. So because of the polythene we opened this separately and the interesting thing for me is it came with Foman. It did. Uh, which Milton you said your snow pitch did as well. It did, yes. Um, Makes it a bit easier to transport. No, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, my Skaven and Dwarf one does not have foam, and I think it's getting a bit battered around the edges for that. Okay. These new pitches where they're so lovely, actually a really good shout. So, back of the box, you will see, actually, it. you've got the autumn one and you've got the grass one. So let's have a look at the pitch. Okay, let's open up the pitch. Man, the, the, the autumnal side looks really good as you open it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. Okay, let's roll it out. And we'll just check and see how much of it we can get in the picture, which is most of the, most of the pitch. So let's open it up and we'll have a look there and see what we can see. Yeah, it's, the picture's catching most of it. So, first thing that strikes you about this. Oh, I love the colours. Yeah. The, the autumnal side really stands out. Um, I like the little details, the little fairies that look like Na'vi from Zelda. Absolutely Zelda fairies, that's um, amazing. You've got your trap door, you've got your, your orc armour, some skulls and... What I really like is the use of the vines, that incorporation of nature into the design of the pitch has worked yeah. really, really well. No, that's cool. And if you are one of those people that likes to build your own pitches, using vines to separate your, your wine zones and the, the halfway mark, actually a really good idea. Yeah. Thanks Games Workshop for that one. Yeah, really nice. I might have to steal that. We've got the, the center. So these are clearly leaves for trees. Yes, this is an overhang of trees like you're looking down on it, isn't yeah. it? So I, I do not quite understand what this is. No, it sort of seems like a... It's a centre garden that has stone all the way up the top, so I'm not, I don't quite, I can't quite no, get maybe, my head maybe around Maybe we're supposed to, to think of these as raised. Yeah, but then how on earth do you play Blood Bowl on? No, this is true. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you raise a very good point there. Anyway, that's the autumn side, and we will have a quick look. Being very gentle with this, because it's brand new. Uh, the ordinary side. So which side do you think you'd play on, first of all? Uh, the autumn side, I think. Do you, you know, know what? what? I think this one's easier to see. I think this one is a little bit clearer, but I like the richness of the autumnal feel. Yeah, it Both sides are fantastic, though. It almost glows. It does. It does almost glow, which is cool. Uh, there are no fairies, there are butterflies on this side. Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame, but that's okay. No. You've you still got orc armour. Yeah, little goblin over here. got the goblin, like you said. You've got the vines. We're not sure what's going on here, but actually it's still really cool looking. And it looks a lot better than it did in the pictures. Uh, yeah, the pictures made it look a bit badly photoshopped, I think. Yeah, it looked about. like it kind of slapped on top, but I think here it looks all right. The one great thing that I've seen in the new pictures is the, the kind of satin finish. Yes. So it's probably a little bit shiny in the video because you're always going to get that. But having that less of a shine, that less of a coating than yeah. the original pictures did, makes it look that so more, much That lusher. more matte feel is much clearer, isn't it? It is, yeah. And we also have the dugouts for the pictures as well. So we've got the forest side. Let's uh, sweep that up so yeah, we can see it better. So there's lots of detail in this one. There is a lot. So it's tree stump, you've got the three zones as you normally would, you've got all the, the zones for your re-rolls, your turns. Score. The numbers are very cool. They are. They are exceptionally swirly. They are. They are o over designed, but actually, because you're only using numbers one to eight, that's really not the end not, of the world. Not a problem. Yeah, that's going to be fine. But I really like the the lodestone, that glowy sort of foresty feel that they've gone for. I think it's very appropriate. Yeah, it's very I, I, I like it. It's um, it always makes me think of Albion, the old Albion campaigns yeah. in Warhammer. So we've got the grass side, the grass side, the summer side, summer side, and then the autumn side, and the autumn side. So again, it's going with the orange glow. It's very similar, isn't it? Yeah, more skulls than you know, more skulls than the other side, but that's just Games Workshop. Otherwise, the pitch is basically the same. Different, different effects, but actually, it's quite cool. If you had that on the side of the pitch, would you be happy that that's actually clear enough to play with? 
Yeah, I think I can read that. Yeah, that'd be fine. Like you say, you're only going one to eight, so it's not. It's not the. It's not, it's not the, the end of the world. Exactly, it's not the most complicated. We've got the Navi spirits back again. Yeah, which is super cool. Um, I like it. I think the pitch is really lovely. And we'll quickly look at the rules for the pitch. Yeah. Wood Elf Arboreal Sanctuary Blood Bowl Pitch. Um, lots of words. So using the pitch, one representing the bold energy of summer, the other depicting the calm of autumn. There we go. If both players agree, then the following rules can be used to represent those conditions. The green tree and vibrant side of the pitch is used during the first half of the game. This pitch represents the forest in summer, bursting into life. Da -da -da. All players may go for it one more time than normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's three times for normal players and four if the player has the sprint skill. If during the first half, three or more casualties have been suffered in total across both teams, so three or more across both teams, so that's two from one and one from another, Yes. the forest's aggression has been sated and the season changes. For the duration of the second half, add the following one. So um, as the forest shifts its mood to one of the... Da, da, da. Players will find themselves less willing to injure their opponents. Subtract one from all armor rolls as part of block or foul actions. Wow. In addition, add one to the result of all dice rolls to see whether players return from being KO'd as woodland spirits emerge from their tree hollows to care for the injured. Interesting. I'm going to be honest. If you could design a pitch for wood elves, yeah. I'd be hard-pressed to go with, with other rules other than these. No, I think they are very... Much of the theme. Yeah, so getting an additional go for it. So everybody gets sprint, or if you've got sprint, you get super sprint. Yep. That's insanely strong. And then, um, actually, once three guys have been injured, let's face it, probably yours yep. as a wood-off player, uh, the second half, you, you, you everybody gets plus one armour, yep. basically, for block or fouls. Couldn't and... ask for more as a wood-off, really, could you? No, and your, your KOs come back on a three plus. Um, I'm not convinced anyone's going to be like, you know what, let's definitely play this. Unless... Unless you're having a wood elf off. Exactly. An elf off. An yeah. elf off. Anyway, yeah. you know, pro elves versus wood elves. Yeah, this would work for both of them. That would be really beneficial. Um, and you'd end up with quite a high-scoring, fun game. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Cool. So that is the pitch. Okay, so next thing we're going to look at is the wood elf dice. So again, we've already opened this because uh, it took a bit more effort than it probably should. Let's have a look. So let's get rid of the, the container. So the thing, I think the first thing to notice is the pictures make them look very brown, but actually they're a sort of pearlescent copper bronze. Definitely copper. Yeah. yeah. Definitely more copper. And like you said, in the pictures, look like brown, but when you actually hold them, they are 100% metallic. Yes, they are. Um, I think they're really nice. I really like them. Okay, let's go, let's go. Push, push, push. Triple push. You know, well, not, not super. Um, I love the colours of them. They are not the clearest dice to see, but that's not going to be a massive problem. No. You can still see the results. Yeah. You can still see the results. Um, one of my favourite things about them is the Orion face on the six. Um, that little throwback to the fantasy battles world, the, uh, the god of the wood elves. Um, yeah. I think that's a nice little touch. No, that's very, very cool. So I've got the halfling dice here as well, just to compare. And I know, Milton, you brought your orc dice yeah. as well, so we can have a look at. So the orc ones... One colour, obviously decent shading in the coloration of theirs. Yeah. And yours are particularly well used. Yes. Especially the pals, um, and the skulls. So good colours there. The halfling dice again, they're pearlescent, so almost yeah. metallic, almost metallic green, almost metallic brown, and these are two of the nicest sets I think that we've got. They're not yes. glow in the dark, but they're still very no, nice. No, so these, yeah, they seem to have transitioned into these uh, these these pearlescent dice, which I think are really nice. Now, they stopped doing, um, well, the NAF stopped doing dice as a reward for joining. Right. Um, and they had a lot of pearlescent dice, which okay. were actually quite difficult to read. These are of a fantastic quality. I do think the halfling dice are easier to see. They are much clearer. And I think these and my undead ones are becoming my favourite dice to use. Right. But from a pure look and coloration, coloration, not sure that's a word, but the colouring point of view. I love the Wood Elf ones. Yeah, I think they really suit the team. I think um, everything about them is, is very thematic. Um, While I, they are thematic, because they're brown, I think they'll go with anything. Anything. Yeah, I mean, brown and green are very common colours. Um, natural colours. I do love all these dice. Yeah, I think they're all, all fantastic. And one thing to put a shout out there is that actually, do pick up the dice with your team. It's, what, five, six pounds? Yeah. And... They are, I say, it's a limited release. Actually, you know what? 
to get to get a bit of bling, it's really good. And then if you want to get them later, actually, they end up going up significantly much. Uh, significantly yeah, on, getting on, them secondhand or, yeah. or still new on eBay is very expensive. It's so very expensive. If you're going to pick up the team, get it from your local game store. You're generally going to get ten percent off. Use that ten percent, put it towards getting these dice. Yeah. Um, so you've got them for your team. Lovely. So those are the dice. Okay, almost to the main meat. We have got the Spike magazine here. So the Spike magazine comes out with every new team now. They're obviously the first few teams that released in Blood Bowl 2016. Haven't got their Spike magazines yet, but so far I've been absolutely loving these. So we've got another beautiful bit of art here. This one has got Shining Embossing on, which I think the Halfling one may have done, but actually it just goes to show that they're putting even more quality yeah, into these Yeah, it's magazines. a very nice touch, isn't it? The, yeah. the production value of these is phenomenal. Okay, so straight inside the front cover, we have got more of the art. I think that's the same coloration, again, new word, yep. the same colors as the ones from the box. It is. Yeah, so they've got the one beautifully painted Wood Elf team. Uh, we've got the intro. We've got, this is quite a good breakdown of each of the positionals, how they work, um, not necessarily how they work, but how they've come to be. Yeah. Um, it tells you about the, about the war dances, about why the Treemen work with the Wood Elves. We've got some famous Wood Elf teams, and we've got the breakdown of the team roster and the star players. So this is, while these rules are already out there, either from the NAF or in the one of the death zones or something, this is updated now. So the roster itself hasn't changed at all. Everybody's the same, everyone's got Armour 7, everyone's an Elf, fantastic. Still got the tree man, but you do have access to more star players here. So Eldril Sidewinder, Jordel Freshbreeze, Morgan Thorg, Willow Rosebark, they're all old school. We've had those guys for a long time. The Swift Twins, uh, they came out in one of the death zones, I think. Um, and again, cool, cool players, so we've seen those before. But we've got some new ones here that we haven't seen yet. So Glorial Summerbloom is a Wood Elf, 7247, 160k. Accurate, dodge, loner, pass, sidestep, and sure hands. So strength two, move seven, edge four. That just makes her a really skilled up lineman. Yeah. But, or a really slow catcher, um, which is interesting. It's an interesting but, choice. Yeah, dodge, great, pass, interesting. Sure hands, actually quite a good pick up for a tournament, I suppose, because your throwers don't come with pass in Wood Elves. Mm. So that gives you, for 160k, a fast, agile, sure hands guy with pass dodge and accurate so did yeah. a bit of protection a bit of accurate in there which is quite cool uh, and we'll cover the other star players when we do uh, the deep dive or the bonehead basics for wood elves in uh, hopefully the next episode of the bonehead podcast but we've got swift fell glimmer shard maple highgrove zolkath the zote which yeah, is so the so zote cool. is an interesting one isn't it yeah so uh, they've gone way back into history to bring zotes back when I saw the spoiler I assumed someone was just Having a joke. Yes. So that's so cool. And they've got Karnath, Darkwald, which is uh, a war dancer. Fancy mm. war dancer. So they've got their own special tree man, which is quite cool. Very nice. So, Athlon Avengers, which takes us on to the uh, Hall of Fame seasons of justice, or whatever it's called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where they have the really expensive um, teams with all the skills there. I would love to see them played, but I think that would be quite... I think it's a lot of work, isn't it? It's a lot of work. Four um, re-rolls, everybody's got stuff. If you're into that, go for it. I think it, you know, it'd be really interesting. Really interesting. 1900, so they've got a special rule, which uh, I didn't notice earlier, so let's just lift that up a bit. Um, so the special rule is, when an opposition player is pushed off the pitch and into the crowd, there is a high probability that they'll vanish into the dense arboreal gloom and not be seen again. Roll the d6 when a player is when an opposition player is pushed into the crowd. On a four plus, that player is gone for the rest of the game. On the roll of a one, two, three, make an injury roll for the player as normal. Um, additionally, if a very sunny res is, uh, result is rolled on the weather table, treat it as a nice result instead. Okay. With the shadow of the trees. That's quite cool. It's a nice touch. So basically, on a four plus, that player just gets badly hurt yeah. and is out for the rest of the game. Mm. That's, yeah. Fortunately, you won't come across that too often. No, I can't imagine you will. Spike magazines are great. We've got breakdowns of all the star players. We've got some of the cards. We've got some of the background there. So we've got Mindy Pie Whistle. Yeah, it's a real mixture bits. of all, all the components that make up the ball. Yeah, beautiful art. 
Um, if you've got the cards, so I'll, uh, at some point the card pack will come out. You can just photocopy them yep. if you've got this book. Um, and, you know, most leagues will just use a spreadsheet for your players anyway. Yeah. The cool thing is you've got the league roster bit where you've got some of the skills. It does give you some idea of which skills to develop your players on. Um, I think this is really useful for players who are just starting out in the game. Yeah, it gives them a good idea of where to head with the team. Yeah. Now, we do recommend that we have a look at Blood Bowl Tactics. I would. Even though it's quite old, the site, the information there is, is bang it's on. It's spot on. Yeah, exactly. We always go for it. Uh, we've got some uh, setups on the next page as well. So you've got defensive setups. The interesting thing is that we do have a tree man in there. Yeah, I'm not quite sure he's a tree man on the uh, no. image. but Difficult to see. It's interesting they've gone with the tree man build and uh, we have yet to see a tree man model. Willow Rosebark, the model's out for that for it Forge is. World now as well, which is cool. Really lovely model. It is. The player, um, you know, it's okay. She's okay. Yeah, she's sort of mid but, middle of the road, really. Yeah, I, I'm terrified of her, to be fair, but, but you know. <laughs> Um, the Zote, the Zote, which is amazing. Move 5, Strength 5, Edge 2, Armour 9, I'm and a ton of skills. Looking forward to see if they make a model for this. The, I really hope they do. Uh, I really hope they do, and I know that there's a couple of other companies that have got a model very similar, yep. which is very cool. Uh, just a really interesting player type. Uh, we've got the new star players there, Glorial and the Kernoff. 240 and 160k, so actually medium range. Yeah. Medium range, which is not, not too bad. The classic Eldril. And we've got the new Tree Man, who is 300, 3 move, which is huge for a Tree Man. Strength 5, Edge 1, Armour 10, normal. Grab, Loner, Mighty Blow, Stand Firm, Tentacles, and Thick Skull. So, Grab, Stand Firm, and Tentacles means that that thing is not going anywhere. No, it's not. No strong arm, and can't throw teammate, but it can only play on Wood Elf team anyway. No. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got some artwork of... Uh Tree Man, so I wonder if this is any indication as to whether or not that's what the model will look like when we eventually get one. You know what? I'd be happy with that. I would too. I think that looks really nice. It's got I like the elf this, face. Yeah, it's got an elf face. It's got that fantasy football styling to it. Yeah, it works very cool. really well. It's very cool. And then we have got a bit of background on Athol Lauren, which is the Wood Elf hometown. Things to do in Athol Lauren. <laughs> Amazing. I really like that. And then we've got some new rules. So we looked at the picture already with the two seasons or yeah. the, the summer and uh, autumn side. We have new weather tables here. So Spring, summer, autumn and winter this time. Yeah, which is very cool. If both coaches agree, they can use one of the following tables in place of the weather table in the Blood Bowl rulebook for the duration of the match. This is ideal for representing matches played at different times of the season. Um... And that is quite cool. So actually, we've got some really interesting results there. We've got Morning Dew. Any player attempting to move an extra square when going for it fails on a 1 to 2. And minus 1 to pick up rolls. Actually, I was going to read through these, but there's actually too many to there's, go There's through. a lot to go through. Yeah. But just looking over them quite quickly, there are some really interesting rules in here. I would be very happy to agree to play on some of these. If you've got a league where you give either an incentive or allow or encourage the stadiums, yep. then you're going to love the weather tables as well. Yeah, and um, one of my favourite things about the snow pitch is it comes with a set of the weather rules the yeah, weather for, uh, for winter. Yeah. So I, I'd be very interested to try these out. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I really do. And then we've got the chap with the rat and the, as ever, beautiful... Yeah, this is gorgeous artwork, comic. this comic. Yeah. So one thing I did notice is they don't have a wizard. They don't. So, okay, the Halflings didn't have a wizard either, but they had the hot pot and the, the beer yeah, and stuff like that. Of... But this one doesn't have a wizard. No. Which is really interesting. So I, I feel like they kind of missed a trick with well, the rules thing. But that said, you're right, there are already loads of different wizards. Yeah, but the theme, the, the druidy kind of nature -y yeah. theme would yeah. have worked quite well for it. It would have. They could have had some kind of druid or mage yeah. or, I don't know. I mean, you've got the weather mage already, which yeah, could be so quite maybe cool. That. But it would have been interesting to see that tie into the uh, the special um, the, the weather tables. Yes. Might have been a bit of a throwaway, but actually for 50k as an inducement, I'm going to bring on the summer weather yeah. and we're going to have to use that weather table. Love Bowl's all about having fun. And that would yeah. sound like pretty good fun. So as ever, the Spy Magazine is fantastic. They, they come in quite cheap, uh, six, seven pounds yep. through, through your retailers, and they are great. So if you get a chance to pick them up, pick them up, preferably from a local game store, but if not, wherever you can get them. Let's support Games Workshop with this product so they keep on doing them, because I believe you are probably after your Orc one. Yeah. Brilliant. Let's have a look at the team. 
Okay, so it's time for the real meat of the release, which is the team itself. So, 12 Citadel miniatures. You've got the beautiful paint scheme on there. Yeah. It comes with two war dancers, two throwers, two catchers, and a load of linemen. So, six linemen. On the back, you will see the breakdown of players. You'll see some of the tokens we will have a look at in the middle. In the middle. We'll have a look at those in a moment. And it recommends some paints here as well, which are not contrast paints just yet. No, they're not. But I think this team is a really good candidate for contrast. You can see here that you've got a lot of skin and then the sort of one piece jumpsuits and yeah. then your boots, your leathery parts. And it's all very natural looking. You're exactly right. So if you're planning on going to a tournament, for example, Super Bowl 7s in August yes. here at Entoyment, run by the Bonehead Podcast or maybe any other tournament you can get to, you could paint up a team of these guys in, in basically no time. I mean, if you look at this, you're right. You've got a dark green, a yellow, some skin, and then you're detailing. Yeah, and having seen the contrast paints and having used the skin one in particular, the skin I know one that looks really comes good. out really well. Yeah. The, I've seen what people have done with the yellows. They look brilliant. And the greens and the browns, I've also, I've noticed, uh, are very nice with the contrast. I think you could do this in an evening. I think you're right. So let's have a look at the models. Okay, so in the box, you get the bases, you get the instructions. So before we look at the models, I've built the Elf Union and the Dark Elves. Likewise. You've, you've done the same, haven't yes. you? Yes. And they were very tricky kits. The Dark Elf more so than the Elf Union, but not far behind. They were both incredibly challenging. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at the damage. Okay. okay. Okay, so we're looking at one, two, three, four, five pieces there. Yeah, I've got four here. One, two, three, four. That's not so bad, is for it? The, for the dancing catcher. Um, again, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces for the war dancer, which looks to be the most. Which is great. However, it looks like you're putting faces on heads. Yeah. So putting face on, putting a face on, putting a face on. Putting a face on, yeah, we've got yeah. a separate piece that's not quite so bad, that one for the looks of it. So yeah, that presented quite a few challenges in the Elf Union kit where you sort of get a, you end up with a bit of a seam down the side of the face. You do get a seam on the side of the face, but um, also it's, it's, it's jolly fiddly. It is jolly fiddly because they are very small parts, but on the flip side, it gives you a lot of variety. It means that even though the model's core base is static, you can switch the faces up you can have a unique team and also it looks like these come with a lot of different faces with yeah, masks and with things. Weird masks. The cool thing I reckon from looking at this is while the necks are different, so the heads won't swap, yeah. if you had separate heads from a different model kit, from an upgrade kit, yeah. actually it wouldn't be too tricky to, to adjust the neck. No. So because it's some of the other model kits, the head is built as part of the shoulders, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit of green stuff would yeah, go actually, a long way with these. Cover that up just fine. So yeah. cool, you, you're saying an independent an individual team, a unique team, yeah. actually probably achievable. Yeah, I think so. Still a middling one, but let's, um, let's have a look at the models themselves. You get your stickers. They're not stickers. They're, They're transfers. Waters. Transfers, yeah. Don't try to stick them. Uh, loads of different designs. Like loads. Independent. They're very nice. Yeah. Um, in fact, a lot of those designs, I think, could probably be used for other gaming systems. I think Yeah. those actually. are quite generic looking icons, aren't they? They they go swell on some uh, Eldar Titans for Adeptus Titanicus. Yeah. Although a man can dream. <laughs> um, and you've got the numbers. You've got the positionals. Six linemen, two catches. So you get it in the box. If you pick up another box set, you're going to need the transfers from that as well. If you if you expand the amount of linemen you've got or the catches, so bear that in mind. Okay, the sprues themselves. So we get two of these. There's a lot of parts on that. That is a lot of parts. But having looked at the instructions, I think a lot of those are the the heads, the transferable heads. Got Orion here, which is a nice, again, a nice throwback to... Uh, to Wood Elves of Old. Wood Elves of Old. Yeah, and the, uh, the Elf symbol the there. The token us. looks like the central part of the pitch, which I guess is the connection. At least it's a token, and that makes sense there. Yeah. Uh, actually, decent detail on the back of the... Yeah, those head. are actually very detailed, aren't they? Yeah, the other ones can be a bit, uh, um, a bit small. Some of the balls are very nice. I noticed there's one with, a, like, a fairy on it. Is there really? Um, oh, that yes, one there. Yes, there. So there's a ball carrying being carried by a, a fae. That's very cool. So that's one of those stuck down balls. You've got the, the two uh, the two loose uh, free balls, balls. Yeah, yeah, loose balls are actually they're they're generic enough that it's okay to use. Yeah. They're balls. Yeah. They're balls. they're balls. And we've got a even smaller ball being held in the hand. That's quite interesting how the balls are sized up when they're loose. It does make a lot of sense. 
Um, so although there's a lot of parts, the instructions make it look like they're quite reasonable. Yep. So I think the logical thing for us to do is to build a couple. Let's do it. Let's have a look. What are you gonna build? Um, I'll do the war dancer. You're gonna go for the war dancer? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go for the thrower. Uh, although, no, I'm gonna do a lineman so we can get to grips with how bad the face is to change. Okay. Okay, I'll go for that. <laughs> this is why I went for this one. And the war dancer, because it's actually quite simple. Yeah, I think, otherwise it's got the most parts of the others. I think the catch is probably the most simple of the lot. Makes sense. So, which pieces do I need? So I need piece one, two. So I need 38 is the body, is that right? I think so. Clip there. Um, when I built my elf team before, I built it in the middle of the night because I got excited when I got the post and I had, uh, had a long day, I think I'd been on a course or something at work, and I came back and ended up building these pro elves until about one o'clock in the morning. And the last Blood Bowl team I built before that, I think was the, I think it might have been, uh, been Dwarves was or Skaven or something? Because okay. the pro elves was one of the first kits that, that came out afterwards, I think. It was. Yeah, and actually, I was, uh, was not expecting the level of complexity that the elf team brought. Now, it's a great model kit. It is. Um, in fact, I picked mine up here at Entoyment um, at Christmas time. Oh, really? Yeah, um, because I just really wanted to try out an elf team. I wanted to try something a bit different, having pretty much only played orcs. And you played them very well. You came second place in Bonehead Bowl. I did. I was uh, out of 14 coaches. Very happy about that. That was really good fun. Coming um, second place to a guy who won, went 3 and 0 is, 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 not, is not a problem. It's not too bad, is it? Okay. Um, yeah, and just found it took me a couple of days, I think, to build them because I just, I just burnt out after doing a few. <laughs> I, I just I wanted a break, you know. No, I think that's probably um, fair enough. And then I, I did the Dark Elf kit very recently. Dark, uh, I didn't find the Dark Elf one quite so bad. Really? Yeah. I, that was... I haven't built the Witch Elves. Oh, okay. Well, they're the worst part, ah. to, be, to be perfectly frank. That's what I have that's, heard. That's the most difficult bit. Okay, so I'm looking at face 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, wow. So oh, 10 is cool. I have legs, I have arms, now I need a head, so 44. So these, these heads, these faces are shared across multiple models. Okay. But only some of them can be used for, oh no, no, it looks like they can all be used. They're all on all. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. That is really good actually, I, I like that. The, the pro elf one had the distinction between male and female faces. Which didn't I it? couldn't really tell. No, I mean. And it's, I 100% ended up sticking. Whatever worked. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I put a female face on a male body, but honestly, I couldn't tell from right. the tabletop. And you know what, I don't think, when it comes to wells, I, they're supposed to be very, not feminine, but just very lovely beings, aren't they? Yeah, Evil, I think they're, but they're um, lovely. Okay, then he's got a funny bit on his chin there that made me think that might have been Flash. So I've got all my pieces, I'm just gonna get my glue, let's go and pop the leg. So this, this lineman, the face looks to be the only tricky piece. The actual model itself is incredibly well put together and in a very few amount of pieces. So let's have... So I know you're a plastic glue guy. I am. I am a super glue guy because it's easier to repair if you make a mistake. Yes. So the downside of these is We've got these Wood Elf players and they come on slotter bases and there's no slotter. So you're going to end up with a gap to fill. Yes, so that was the same for the Undead. Yes, it was. And Dark Elves, I think. Yes, and the, uh, no, the Dark Elves are slotter. Oh, just halflings. just very small slotter. Halflings. Uh, there's, I don't think there's any no. slotters in there at all. So a really great way around that is to use cocktail sticks. It is. And cut off the edges and just slot them in place, glue them, job done. Or blue tack underneath works just as well, whatever you've got to hand. Um, bit of a side note, the slotter bases for Blood Bowl are ever so slightly smaller than the non-slotter 32s. Are they? Yeah, so if you have a kind of team tray or anything, these will be slightly looser than the ordinary 32s. I did not know that. So when I built some of my teams without slotters, 
I just used the AOS ones with uh, with no holes in because actually it saves me a bit of work but those bases end up being slightly bigger um, which isn't the end of the world but just one thing of note right let's try this face then uh, we've got a round peg hole which actually I think this is going to be this leg is surprisingly difficult to line up oh uh, really there's no hole for it to go into you just have to sort of sit it there and hope it glues yeah all right that... I've got it there I think Okay, the way the mask fits, you know we mentioned that they ended up being a kind of line around the face. Yeah. There is no line because of the way the mask is shaped. Okay. Really clever. That's clever. Yeah, I like that. I approve of that. And as you can tell, I'm absolutely Leroy jenkins my way through that. And we'll pop him. All right, so on there. Second leg on. Ah, the smell of plastic glue. Yes, yeah, so I am making us a little bit so uh, nice and warm in this room, so that smell Heady. is... Uh... I'll pop the cap back on. <laughs> there we go. Head is on, and all I've got to do now is add the shoulder. Oh, you stormed through that. I struggled there with that leg a little bit. Well, this is... The, the model is incredibly, sim incredibly simple to put together. See, this is not complicated. It's just lining that leg up where there's no clear join. And I've noticed that on a few. I had that on the, um, the Dark Elves as well. There were a couple... Couple of models there, which um, you kind of got to guess a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of guesswork, but you know what? When they're painted up, it doesn't really stand out. It doesn't. No. It doesn't really affect it. It's, it's very clever that way. And uh, let's pop his shoulder pad on. Yeah, got good guidelines there. Can I glue it in place? Is the question. A bit on the back there. So, let's get his a bit head loose. On. So I'm gonna add a bit more glue. This is where your super glue is superior glue. Allows you to correct the mistakes. Yeah. Okay. And I am a bit of a, a fast and dirty hobbier when it comes to models. I can do careful work, but I would rather play than paint. I uh, know no others. There you go. We have one. Oh. One lineman. Very nice. Built and ready to go. Really impressed with that. Let's have a look at the token while you're building your wood elf. Okay, so this one's interesting. You see the, the arm join here doesn't sit into anything. It just sits loose like... Oh, it's a free-floating yeah, arm. Yeah, it's a free-floating arm join, which yes. I haven't seen in a while. I don't think I've seen that since one of the older Fantasy Battles kits. That's good, though, because it means that you can it adjust... it does mean you can adjust it to the sort angle of whatever of the angle you like. Well, I tell you what, having that on the mummies would have been an incredible gift. Well, it would have uh, given you a bit more variety on them as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, I used six mummies for my Bonehead Bowl team, and um, it took a bit of work making them look even slightly different. Uh, right, what have we got? We've got the token there, which I think is beautiful. The balls and the other markers are very good as well. And there we have it, one war dancer. There we go, so we've got a war dancer, we've got a lineman, and the token. So just going to compare the size of the models there. So we've got the wood elf war dancer, we've got the pro elf blitzer, and we've got the wood elf lineman. Um, and I think... The wood elves seem to be a bit slighter. Yeah, I think they are. I think they're a little a bit smaller in build. Let's chuck a couple more. It of might your... be the positioning. It yeah. might be where they, um, the poses they have, because the, the one on the right there is is very low down, isn't he? Yeah. And even the war dancer is in quite a low sprint. But you know what? Gorgeous models. They are really lovely and. Their hands are primed for converting. You could put some weapons in these guys and use them for whatever game you could you want use to them play. for. Yeah, all sorts. I think. Lovely, lovely models. So there you have it. A very quick look through at the Wood Elf releases for Blood Bowl coming out this weekend. Once again, a big thank you to Entoyment for um, allowing us access to the toys to have a look a bit early. Yeah, massive thank um, you to them. So, what did you think of the pitch? I really like it. I liked it. I liked it a lot more in person than I liked the pictures of it. 
I agree. I agree. I wasn't sold when I saw the pitches, but actually, it's a lovely pitch to have. And the rules are quite interesting. The rules are cool. Yeah, the rules are cool. Talking of rules, the spike. Another brilliantly done episode. Episode issue. <laughs> episode of Spike Magazine. Um, and I like the weather rules in there as well. I do too. I think all of the rules add a lot to the game. Going to be a lot of fun. Be interesting to see if people play with them. The weather table. I think you can get away with using in any pitch. Uh, with any pitch, with any game, with any teams. The this pitch is beautiful for elf on elf action. I think so. If you've got low armor value and where movement is actually going to help you, um, this is really quite. The special rules for this are great. But obviously, you don't have to use it with the special rules. The the orange side is really lovely. It is. The dice are fantastic as well. Um, beautiful color, and ultimately, we're here for the models. The models, the most important part. So. First of all, compared to Elf Union and Dark Elf, much easier kit. The kit was, much easier to build yeah. than the other two Elf teams. Much easier to build, much less parts. Bad English, good models. Um, size wise, obviously they look slightly smaller than the Elf Union, but I think the Elf Union models are a bit big. I think they possibly are. Yeah. And also, I think the Wood Elves, in terms of the fluff, the lore, are supposed to be quite slight. And ultimately, they're Armour 7. Yes, they are. I mean, most of the Pro Elves are Armour 7 as well, but that Blitzer, definitely not. Um, models are lovely. Really are. Pitch is great. Spike is great. Dice are great. Um, coming out this Saturday, um, if you are remotely interested in playing Blood Bowl, Wood Elves are a great team to play. They are a fantastic team to they play. They are Tier 1 for a reason really good um, and like we said earlier contrast paints we're painting these up in no time so I I strongly approve of these now Rich isn't here with us today he's actually away on a course um, he would not be approving of the Wood Elf no, models he would not because he hates elves but actually if you are normal um, it's a great kit yeah thanks very much for joining us and thanks to Entoyment for letting us play we'll see you again soon <laughs>